2022 has been a year and a half. No, no really. Uh, the run up to this year was rocky to say the least and uh, my last upload date should give you a good indication of how long this has been going on. As grateful as I am for everything that 2022 has taught me, I could not be more excited for 2023. Mm, so good. Today I need to reflect and dissect 2022 because it has been intense. Hopefully some of the lessons that I've learned this year can help you in some or other way as well. As you might be able to tell, this is going to be a chatty kind of video. If you are looking for not this kind of content, you are welcome to check out the rest of my channel for Ancient Sims 4 content dating back to the year 2019 up until 2021. So for context, I am less than two weeks away from completing the final leg of my medical uh, studies journey, if you will, the community service. For those of you who are either not from South Africa or you're from South Africa and you don't know how medical school and the medical like qualification system works, let's just do a quick bit of, of education. So in order to become a doctor, you typically study for about six years at university. Then once you've completed your studies, you are posted out by the national government to a relatively larger teaching hospital where you work and live as a full-time doctor under supervision. And in this time, you're basically learning procedures, uh, doing operations for the first time, that kind of thing. Then once you're signed off at the end of this two year period, you are given the thumbs up. It means that you are fit to essentially practice independently, but in South Africa, you don't actually get to do your own thing yet. You have to serve your community, i.e. the public healthcare system, by going to a smaller hospital or clinic for another year. This is aptly called your community service. This, here we go. This is where I am. And at time of recording, I am less than two weeks away from this near decade long journey to become a doctor and i am tired and if i had to sum up the lessons that i've learned this year into three words they would likely be sacrifice with a capital sacrifice patience and faith if my reflection today prompts you to do some reflecting of your own please share your three words for how you would describe your 2022 with the rest of the community down in the, in the comments section below. I'd love to see how different people experience the year and what kind of words and themes you think of when looking back on 2022. This has been how I survived the year, just by the way. In terms of my focus for 2023, I think that it is fair to say that for the first time in nine years, I have the complete freedom to design my life and my career in a way that suits me and my values. And the freedom is something that I'm so excited for. For some people, it's really scary. And I mean, understandably so. We, as young doctors, have been told where to go and what to do with a fair amount of job security, not as much as you'd think, for the past third of our lifespan. But for me, Remember when I said like the capital sacrifice earlier? I was not joking. Every aspect of my life has taken a massive hit and I sincerely feel like I'm coming out of this time uh, a little bit of a shell of my former self, to be honest. YouTuber, I hardly know her. It's my channel, I can make bad jokes. I love being a doctor and I love helping people. I love helping their families. I love building relationships with people and helping them achieve their health goals. I love problem solving and trying to find easier, more efficient and effective ways to do things. I love finding ways to use technology to streamline like different aspects of our healthcare system. These things are my fuel and that you'd think would be a good thing. But when you work in a system, <laughs> that sees its healthcare workers, not just doctors, healthcare workers across the board, as replaceable parts in a machine, while simultaneously expecting those healthcare workers to be married to their jobs and give everything to their jobs without little care for the consequences that that might uh, entail. It hurts. And I know that I'm not alone in this. So when looking forward to 2023 and the blank slate that it is, to be honest. I have been excited and wanting to do research around what exactly I wanna achieve. For the longest time, my only real goal 
goal has been survive. Survive final year of medical school, survive internship, survive comserve, survive The Sims 4's prolonged shelf life. But today, for the first time in a long while, we are going to think about non-survival based goals, thrive goals, if you will. In terms of the specifics of uh, setting goals themselves. I'm quite sympathetic to James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits approach to goal setting. He mentions in, in articles actually on his, on his blog that goal setting is a balance between deciding the outcome that you want versus the sacrifice that those outcomes will require of you. And he's also quite intentional about uh, discussing the view that goals themselves only set a direction but systems and habits are what propel progress in the direction that you want to go. With that said, I did a bunch of reading, soul searching, thinking I'm going to come up with a list of like 10 goals for, the, for 2023 and a big part of what he, <laughs> what he preaches is actually you should have one goal at a time focus completely on it, thinking about it, integrating the habits that you that will get you to that goal into your daily habits that you already have. So for example, if I want to be more organized, stacking, planning my day with my daily cup of coffee. I'll know I'll always sit down with my daily cup of coffee. Why not plan my day at that exact moment so that the two become associated with each other? He also discusses the importance of not only setting a minimum threshold to aim for, but also an upper limit so that when you aim, to do the thing that you want to do, you actually end up somewhere in a happy middle between them and not just scraping by with the bare minimum, but not pushing yourself to an unsustainable point that you can't sustain, is the word I'm looking for. And finally, he also just mentions that you need to find a way to measure your goals, even if it's a, an intangible thing, just to find a way to measure the kinds of things that you're doing that are chipping away and getting you towards the thing that you want to achieve. So there are a bunch of other interesting points to consider in the art of goal setting and achievement, um, but I'll link to those relevant articles down in the description if you also want to learn a bit more about them. For me, the biggest priority that I have for 2023 is that I just... <laughs> it sounds really silly, but I really want to be healthy. In modern medicine, we are taught that health isn't just the absence of disease. Health is a combination of your biological wellness, your psychological, social, and spiritual wellness as well. And if I look at any of those four things, I can without a shadow of a doubt say that I am the unhealthiest that I've ever been. And I do my best to help my patients with these aspects, but this is the first time that I am going to take the time and the effort and the energy out to help myself become a healthy person too and I know that it sounds fairly broad and it is and it's a fairly daunting task but I'm excited to exit survive mode and I'm excited to enter thrive mode and most of all I'm ready for where the rest of that road is going to take me. If you're interested I'm going to be documenting my journey to biopsychosocial spiritual wellness on my weekly not weekly newsletter next year so follow the link here to subscribe if you want to be privy to some of my insights during this time. I'll also be sharing some footage of my recent office cleanup as well and planning my next dream setup. So I will see you over there. Thank you for watching. Sil -sil.